Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel again for no doubt another week of chaos. But let's get into the big story and concept for today's video then. And that is that Europeans are now starting to panic. The realization that we've been talking about for the last year and a half on this channel about the energy crisis is now starting to set in with most people's minds. They really are taking drastic action now when it's almost too late to avoid freezing cold household this winter. Uh, just one example is you remember at the start of the year, including some of last year, we talked about wood burners and I recommended that everyone, if you don't have a, a secondary source of heat, you should probably start thinking about a wood burner or opening up that old fireplace because there would be restrictions on energy as we went into this winter of 2022. Well, that is now looking like a certainty and I've got a couple of articles to share with you today. But one of the main things that's happening in Europe right now is that there is this huge, huge demand, not just on wood burners, uh, log burners, etc. And a lot of places have now sold out or they simply cannot get the supply because where are a lot of them made? Well, here's a clue. So the good quality ones are made uh, often in Europe, but some of the cheaper ones are not made in Europe. So there's this massive supply issue. And of course, a lot of heavy industry has now closed down. So anything to do with metals and the like, um, maybe they haven't all closed down, but they're definitely starting to grind to a halt because what do you need? You need a lot of natural gas. You need a lot of energy to fire the furnaces and really to keep the industry going. And we talked about Germany before and how Germany is the powerhouse of Europe, very, very heavy on industry. And now Germany is just starting to very slowly close down as they get into this crisis period. So what are local people resorting to then? Well, it varies depending on the each European nation. But we've heard all sorts of stories over the last weeks of everything from Poland, people queuing all day long just to get a bag of coal. This is how ridiculous uh, it is now. Uh, through to other European nations where people are queuing up to buy wood, uh, logs for their fire. Uh, but these are in short supply as well because uh, as we always talk about with supply and demand, as there's more of a demand pull on products, the supply gets shorter and prices go up. Now, this isn't even including all of the inflation that we're seeing as well at the moment, which we'll, we'll come on to. The Eurozone is now at 10% inflation. And it, I've said from the very beginning, this is only going to get worse. All these economists every month have been wrong, 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 saying that we've peaked, we've peaked. We, we apparently peaked at 6%, 7%, 8%. Now, now they're still saying we've peaked. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this very frank with you. We have not peaked on inflation. You cannot peak on inflation when you have such uh, rapid energy costs. Because as I always talk about, energy is what drives the economy. Energy is what drives GDP. All of your jobs, uh, pretty much every single job that you do out there relies upon one initial input, and that is energy. Without energy, everything grinds to a halt. Now, I did read one shocking, uh, fairly disturbing story the other day, which has left me a little perplexed, but more annoyed than anything else. And this is about the law that's been passed to stop people going into European forests and picking up uh, wood. So let's say there's branches that have fallen on the floor or trees that have fallen over. Maybe they were blown over in a storm. There is a, you are not permitted in certain countries to go into that forest and let's say a, a tree's fallen, you're not allowed to cut that up, uh, take it home for firewood or even just kindling and sticks. It is now no longer permitted in certain countries. Now, you've got to ask the question, why is that? Well, if you look into it in a little more depth, it's because those forests are owned by the government. It's classed as government land and the government has mandated that people can't do it. Now, it got me thinking about this whole thing. And you remember we talked about lots of historical documentaries on this channel, but everything from when I covered the Circe Revolt, 1381, uh, the Black Death and, and all the others. And I remember back in the, the feudal days where the king or the lords, they owned the land and you weren't even allowed to go onto the land and try to catch any game or, or poach as it were. And it made me think, have things really changed that much today if the government 
somehow which is elected for the people, by the people, in order to protect the people. How is it that the government, which is a faceless entity, especially many of these departments, own the land and say to you that you are not allowed to go into that land and pick up twigs so that you can heat your home and not freeze to death? It's so crazy what's going on now. Everything has gone backwards. Now, yes, I get it before people start saying, I work in forestry management and, you know, this is the reason and that's the reason. I get it. I totally do. I understand. But when you've got people that are potentially going to freeze to death this winter, when they could just pick up some of these logs and twigs and sticks and whatever else you want to say, fallen branches that are just lying all over these forests. Some of these forests are enormous. So what does it matter if people go out and pick up a few twigs or sticks? It, it doesn't make any sense. And a lot of the government departments are in conflict with one another saying, oh, we don't want you burning wood because of climate change. Sorry, wait. So people may freeze to death in certain countries and the government's worried about the climate change aspect of actually burning that wood. It doesn't make any sense. And actually, I'll tell you another thing that doesn't make sense. The certain locations now where entire villages have gotten together and they are using wood chips. So people using their own land, they are taking uh, old trees or they're taking what they're classing as trees or branches that have fallen. They turn it into wood chips. And they're creating, and this is actually happening in several villages, these centralized heating plants, very small. And then uh, similar to what happens in Russia, that heat then is distributed via pipes to the village. And now the government's getting involved and in saying that this is not permitted in certain areas. Why? Why is that not permitted? Does that not seem a little suspicious to you? They're not even saying the reason why this is not permitted. They're just saying it's not permitted. And yet a lot of these factories and plants for a long time now have been getting all of these subsidies, green subsidies for burning uh, pellets, wood pellets, classed as green energy. That's what they were classed as. And now we're being told, oh no, that, that, that isn't right anymore. No, no, the wood pellets are not green energy. We're not classing that as green energy. Well, doesn't that seem convenient that it's happening right now as we're going into this freezing winter? And we are, we've got some Met Office reports now, uh, not just from the UK, but other European nations. And I've actually got a couple of articles here. Let's start with the first one, which is from Bloomberg. Europe's first cold snap is early test for continent in crisis. And it's talking about how, and this came out last week, so it obviously applies now, temperatures to drop across Europe by middle of next week, which is actually uh, now presently this week. Temperatures in London will be almost five degrees Celsius below average uh, six and a half uh, degrees below in, in Frankfurt, other German cities three and a half degrees, France and Spain three to four degrees lower. And let me read out a couple of uh, statements in, in, in this then. Grid operators are drawing up plans for how to ration energy if necessary this winter with options maxed out to replace Russian supplies of natural gas. The onus is on reducing demand. Ideally, this is done voluntarily by consumers, but if not, here we go, there are several steps a network company can take, the most extreme of which is organized shutoffs. And I think we know that this is going to be coming. We've been talking about this for a long time. They are obviously going to start doing these uh, shutoffs and rationing. In fact, I saw another article this week. Uh, this was from, uh, again, different government organizations in the EU. And they're saying that if the people won't reduce their energy consumption themselves, we will have to mandate it. And they're saying just this month, so this is for October, we need to see a 13% reduction in household energy. Otherwise, the government will step in and mandate this. We also have the European Union discussing a mandatory power reduction target, which will be passed into law very shortly. In Britain, there are signs that early morning gas demand is increasing already this week, data from network operator National Grid shows. And we have this very lovely picture of the uh, very cold UK and Western Europe right now, showing how cold temperatures are going to be getting. Now, the skeptics among you may ask, well, where is all of this coming from then? Weren't we told that we're in this big global warming period? So why now are they saying that we're going to be going into 
uh, colder winter periods. And what's the, the evidence for this? How is that? I mean, how do they explain that away with the global warming and now these freezing cold winters? If you ask me, it plays in perfectly with the global solar minimum theory and the uh, Greenland ice cores, which you're not even allowed to talk about anymore. Uh, 10,000 years worth of uh, climatic data and, and temperature changes. I, I highly recommend that everybody looks into that. Um, the documentary is banned, uh, but it, it was put out maybe about 15 years ago. Now you can find it on some alternative platforms, but it shows uh, temperature changes and how they change you know, going through these regular cycles and it does play into a lot of what we are seeing right now with these hotter summers and these much much colder winters. I want to move on to the next article then. Colder early winter in Europe could worsen cost of living crisis, say forecasters. Europe is likely to experience a colder, drier and less windy early winter, according to forecasting models compiled by the EU's meteorology agency. As the UK energy regulator warned, there is a significant risk of gas shortages this winter. Now, a lot of Europeans are coming up with a lot of drastic measures, as we alluded to, uh, picking up wood and trying to get coal and all sorts of other things. But one thing that isn't being talked about is the amount of people rushing out to buy electric heaters right now. And I can tell you why this plan is going to backfire and fail very badly. And that is because electric, the coefficient and performance ratio of or rating of electric heaters versus natural gas, which is what a lot of European countries use for home heating, is very much out of whack. It's a lot more efficient to actually use natural gas than it is to use electricity. Now, the other thing is a lot of people don't realize where all this electricity comes from. They think it's coming off solar panels and windmills and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, a little bit is, but the majority of it is coming from uh, natural gas plants and other kinds of plants, coal. So all of these people thinking that they're going to get electric heaters and they're just going to turn these electric heaters on when the gas supply gets cut off. Well, that isn't really going to work because you're going to create this huge spike of base load on the grid and it's probably going to just close the grid down. I remember years ago watching a, a, a short documentary on, on this and it was quite interesting actually. And it talked about how during soap operas, the UK, the British love their soap operas. And during the break on their, their evening soap operas, they have to actually, the power companies have to ramp up production to a huge level because everyone goes and turns their kettle on. It's quite interesting. So what do you think will happen then when everyone doesn't just turn on a kettle, but turns on these electric heaters through winter? It's gonna cause a huge drain on the grid. And another thing that we're seeing at the moment is a number of richer, so wealthier Europeans are basically just saying, and I spoke to clients this week, are basically saying that they're just gonna leave their house, lock it up for the winter, whereas normally they might go away for a few weeks during the winter. They're just going to be closing their house throughout the winter, going to other places. Um, just off the top of my head, some things I heard this week, Canary Islands, Cyprus, uh, Spain, Greece. And it's quite interesting when you correlate this to hotel bookings at the moment, where you are seeing this increased demand because a lot of people are looking to actually escape these freezing cold winters and temperatures. And I don't think that a lot of people who live in warmer climates really appreciate just how cold it gets in Europe, in the UK in winter. It gets really, really cold. I mean, not as bad as Russia where you might get minus 20 degrees Celsius, but they're fine. They've got all the natural gas and, and energy they need, but a lot of these other countries simply don't. If you think about how many pipelines there were before, why was Nord Stream 2 coming online? Because Europe wanted more and more energy and more and more cheap energy at that. And of course, that's off the cards now. So is Nord Stream 1, uh, full of seawater at last check this morning. And this is on top of other, because there's a lot of smaller pipelines, other pipelines being closed. Right now, if the data is accurate, there is only one pipeline coming into Europe to provide natural gas. That's it, just one pipeline. I really don't think people appreciate the severity of what is actually coming to Europe. Not just an energy crisis where I do think people will freeze to death this winter, especially in these colder regions where they haven't prepared or 
and a lot of time it's not their fault. If, you, if the media is saying there's nothing to worry about and a lot of people trust the media, they're not going to prepare. It's only people that don't trust the media and watch my channel and a couple of others who have been rushing out, have been preparing, have been doing all the stuff that I talked about from you know, the high end, getting wood burners, log burners, right through to opening up those fireplaces again, uh, getting them swept, getting them cleaned. Right there, and, and that sounds crazy because some of these fireplaces, like at my last house when I, I, I talked about uh, getting the fireplace swept. That fireplace hadn't been opened in over 20 years. That's how long it hadn't been opened for because there was a, a new fireplace around put over the top of it. So I can only imagine what it's gonna be like in certain areas or mountainous regions where they do get minus 10, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So I don't know what the conversion is for the uh, Americans watching, but it is gonna be really, really bad. You get very thick, very deep snow and you get snowed in and the temperatures are plummeting and there's just no energy because the, the, the grid can't send you the energy and the government's powerless to do anything because of what they have you know, created this crisis. I just don't see what the solution is gonna be. That's why I really think it's so crucial that everyone takes matters into their own hands and actually prepares the, as best as you can for this cold winter. And I think it is getting more and more difficult for a lot of people to prepare because of these high levels of in inflation, 10% now throughout the Eurozone with no end in sight. So you think, well, I'm gonna go out and start preparing now. What, as jobs are getting cut, as salaries are starting to get cut, as inflation is going through the roof, so there just isn't a lot of money available, your money doesn't go as far. Now, if you do feel that you are going to be affected by some of the things I've talked about in this video, I do wanna give you some tips here, most of them fairly low cost, so that at least if there is a freezing cold spell and there's no heating available, or there's no uh, energy available, or the, the grid is cut, or something like that, because we have seen all of these mysterious fires and explosions and just huge levels of reduction, not just throughout food, but refineries and energy. Uh, let me just give you a few tips now. Now, the first one is something like this. I don't know if you've ever seen these. You can get them from a lot of outdoor shops and they are just super, super warm insulated tops and they will really, really keep you warm even if it's quite cold outside. Now, when you combine that with wearing thermals, so everything from thermal underwear to t-shirts, um, pants, gloves, a uh, hat, that's uh, socks, when you combine it with these sort of things, this is what's gonna keep you a lot warmer. For those of you who have served in the military or, or family members, you'll be very familiar with this. What do you always focus on? You focus on your feet, so thick socks, uh, wool socks, and you focus on your head. And then after that, you look at your hands and then your body, etc. So start with these things. A pair of socks isn't expensive. Uh, a hat, a woolly hat is not gonna be expensive either. You don't need to spend uh, a lot of money on all these uh, brands and things like that. Just go out and get a generic, uh, very warm wool hat, wool socks if you can. If not, get something synthetic that is very similar. After that, it would be wearing lots of different layers of clothing. The more thin layers you wear, the warmer that will keep you. Wool blankets, anything wool is always good. And I know it's extremely expensive. I actually have 100% wool blankets and they are a little bit difficult to find and get. But if you go to any army or navy surplus store, this is where you'll often find some old military wool blankets at a very reasonable price. Okay, now I know some of these examples might have come across a little bit more extreme than normal, but honestly, it's better to prepare just in case the worst case scenario does happen. If they have to cut off energy, uh, which is looking very likely, and you just haven't got that energy input into your home, then you are gonna have to start thinking about more creative ways to stay warm this winter if you are in an especially cold climate. All right, thanks for watching today. Take care, God bless, I'll see you tomorrow.